So you do the same thing I do. When your wife comes to you and says, hey, we need to talk, you're like, come on, bring it on. <laughs> and it's you and me, babe, whatever comes. Knowing bigger hands are holding us. And the greatest days are ahead of us. Growing in love, Growing in love. learning to be a better us. Welcome to A Better Us. We're glad you've stopped by our home. Today we're going to hear from Bill and Pam Farrell. They are marriage experts and authors and they're going to shed some light on the communication differences between men and women. They actually encourage couples to make sure they take turns communicating. Which is actually code for Anne, stop talking so Ron can talk. <laughs> Your words, not mine. I know, I own that. For sure. The old comedian Red Skelton once said, I haven't spoken to my wife in 18 months. I don't like to interrupt her. <laughs> Actually, okay. Women really do use more words per day than men. Mm -hmm. So basically, we can out-talk you. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but is that really communicating or is it just unloading? There is a difference, you know. Also, Dr. Mike is on the beach talking about a battleground in marriage that we don't often think about, and it's a battleground in mm. our mind. Mm -hmm. And as always, the conversation's going to flow around our kitchen island when we sit down with our kitchen couples. There's CFL football great Mike Pinball Clemens and his wife Diane. And newlyweds Eric and Kara Maines. So grab a coffee, grab your spouse, gently, and let's get started. Men and women, we relate differently. <laughs> yes, the way we, we communicate is very different. And we have noticed there's an assumption that most couples live with that's not exactly true. And that assumption is that all of our conversations are be good for both of us at the same time. Right. And, and the reason we hold that assumption is that's the way it was when we were dating. Everybody was operating at their best and we were making sure that conversations were working. But in long-term relationships, it's more important to learn to take turns when it comes to communication. Mm -hmm. So guys, when it's your wife's turn to talk, first thing you wanna do is turn off that fix-it mechanism you were born with. You know, as men, we're all fixers. So you do the same thing I do. When your wife comes to you and says, hey, we need to talk, you're like, come on, bring it on. Because <laughs> we're gonna size up the problem, we're gonna, we're gonna figure out a solution, we're gonna apply that male solution to the conversation, and we're gonna be her hero for the day. And it's not really what she's looking for. And, and so, guys, when it's her turn to talk, just turn off that fix-it mechanism, pack up your bags, and go on a journey with her. And let her take the conversation anywhere she wants it to go. And I, got, I get a lot of responses from men when I share this. The first one tends to be, Bill, you do not understand what you are asking. Because if I give my wife permission to talk like that, she will <laughs> never stop talking. And, guys, it's not true. She will finish. Yes. And you'll know she's done because she'll do something like... <sighs> and she might even say something that sounds like mm, you understand me like nobody else hmm. <laughs> which I know is not true but I like this look right here so I just <laughs> go with it and the second reaction we tend to get is what is the point you know we started off talking about vacation and somehow her mom got in the conversation and um, and her mom has a, a sister named Karen and Karen's got a 17 year old daughter and we have a 17 year old daughter and she's got a good friend named Karen is not a good, real good influence and and the conversation just starts to spin and we start to wonder what is the point well men the point of the conversation is simply to help her finish because one of the primary ways that women build trust in relationships is they connect their life to the person they think is most important in their life. So if your wife's talking to you, she's connecting her life to you, building trust in the relationship so your relationship can thrive. Right. Help her finish, but not by saying, you know, give me the headlines, cut to the chase. What's the <laughs> bottom line here? Yeah, not a good tactic, guys. Instead, just lean in and listen and let her take that conversation anywhere she wants it to go. She'll love you for it. And it's very different than the way um, guys process life. And so men like to stay in the box. We uh, women ha often have more words per day than the average guy, so we can just basically out talk them. And because of that, sometimes we sell our man short. Um, for, 
so one example is there's this cartoon that I saw and um, the girl said to her uncle, oh, everything you did just totally changed my life. And the uncle took out a business card and said, you can take this down to the gasoline store and they'll give you 10% off. And the wife saw the whole interaction. She's like, okay, our niece was pouring out her heart and you handed her a business card? Have you no feelings? And he said, I had feelings. I was afraid she was going to hug me. I was scared it was going to go on and on. And I was happy when it was over. I have feelings. Guys really do have feelings. They're mm -hmm. just slower to reveal themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're buried in the very bottom of each one of the wa what we call waffle box compartments. Mm -hmm. And so um, when a guy brings up a subject to talk about, he actually thinks it's that subject you're yes. going to talk about. But we women, we see the five or six other boxes or other topics surrounding that first box. And because men are problem solvers by nature, uh, when they have one box open, it's one problem to solve. When they have two boxes open, two problems solved, three boxes open, three problems solved, and mm -hmm. so on. And every male has a limit mm -hmm. on how many boxes or how many issues he can have presenting at the same time. And if we get too many boxes going, girls, we're going to know it because he's either going to fire up and become angry or he's just going to shut that conversation down and escape to like the garage to get away from us and all of our words. So the gift that we can mm -hmm. give is the gift of staying in the box, especially his favorite box and become a great listener. This is why Romans 15 7 tells us to accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. So when it comes to communication, take turns and accept one another. All right, Bill and Pam Farrell love their teaching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this whole idea of men and women think differently and we need to uh, just kind of understand that and to, to know that uh, we can accept each other's differences and, uh, and the guys can, the suggestion was to lean in I and like listen in. and I let like her talk in. if she needs but to. But I think, I think the whole thing about, commun about, about thinking differently is communicating differently because as we're yeah. thinking, we are communicating, we are speaking yeah. differently than each other. By the way, we're with our kitchen couples here, oh. Mike and Diane and, and Eric and Kara. We better just say a quick hi yeah. that way. <laughs> but, you know, we do marriage seminars uh, across the country, and we find that with couples that we are talking with, communication issues are really high up there yeah. in the whole stress factor in marriages. And so really figuring out how we... Uh, think differently and communicate differently is important. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the number one, I think it's the number one, you know, mm -hmm. way for a, success, a successful marriage if you have the right communication. Mm -hmm. um, prayer is first. Absolutely. Communication is second, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have that communication, then something's lost in the middle. Yeah. Right? So you have yeah. to have that, you know, communication. Mm -hmm. And that's something that. I had to learn. Yeah. This guy had to teach me because I was terrible. You know, I would keep everything in, right? I was one of those people that, oh, I just, you know, just stuff it down yeah. and not say anything and stuff it down and not say anything. And he'd be like, just talk to me. Like, so this, this goes against the grain on. because right? you're, the you're supposed to have yeah. 10,000 more words exactly. a day than Mike does. And we're, but we're not completely so much. opposite. Yes. Yeah. And it's funny because we're, we're opposite that way. I said, I was. Uh, I started the heavy breathing uh, a little bit ago uh, because, you know, as, as a football player, you know, when you come to the sideline and you're gassed, they put this oxygen mask on you, right? And, and that's what happened for me. Yeah. So we went to this Athletes in Action conference and they had the marriage conference and all of a sudden, right, they told us, I mean, we know that we think differently. It's not just that we think differently, it's how, how we think yeah. that is the key. Yeah. And when you put the time in to understand that, it really... It's, Oh, it's like oxygen. Oh, okay. It makes yeah. sense now. Get it yeah. now. Yeah. You put the time yeah. in, right? Yeah. When you put the time in, it reduces tension, yeah. right? Yes. And, and so, so I found that to be so fertile. And, and um, I, I think a real, another key for me is, is kind of after I did that and after I understood that, then I thought about, you know what? This is God's design. Maybe I ought to erase this, right? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. God said that like this is this is the way he tended to do this. So 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 yes, yeah. let's, let's let's embrace she, she's it. She's a good compliment to you. No she question. She really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's funny yeah. because people the best always compliment say I know. that you guys are opposite. He's more like, you know, the woman when it comes to certain things and I'm more like the guy, yeah. but 
you know, we, we figured that out and we've made it work. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's awesome. the bottom line. Now, what about you guys? Do you well, find... When we were watching that clip, um, we laughed because we could relate very well. Absolutely. <laughs> very well. Eric definitely thinks in the box and likes to only address one situation it's at true. a time. It's true. That's I the way love... God intended situations <laughs> yeah. to be, to be uh, handled. <laughs> one, one step at a time. <laughs> he only gave us two feet, so we can have one step at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where I tend to just start at one point and go to the next yep. and go to the next. And maybe Eric only wants to discuss this one topic. And I think it's him wanting to open up about all of these surrounding topics. Like, like and, for, for, and for, for instance, like after a youth night, I would I would debrief with Kara and say what... Your youth pastor, just That's for right, someone yeah. who youth might pastor, not... Um, we debrief with Karen and just say, so what did you think about this one section? So it would say, like, the, the time of worship. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that one time? Like, how, how were the songs and everything? So Kara would, would take that as an opportunity. Yeah, I'd be like, okay, to, let's talk about so, them. So let's she, talk she about would, all of She would it. kind of uh, allude to what I asked. She'd be like, oh, well, yeah, actually, this song, oh, I love this song. But then, then she'll bring up other things. Yeah, just like, like, but then, uh, you know, there was some guys outside that you had to go talk to. And it was just like, oh, no, I want to. Just want to talk about the worship part right now, and then, <laughs> and then, then maybe I'll overwhelmed. ask about that. But yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> so we definitely think differently, yeah. and uh, we're still learning on how to communicate we are. Um, effectively yeah. and efficiently. Yeah. Yeah. So what Bill Farrell was saying, okay, understand that that's the way the wife's spaghetti mind works mm -hmm. because it, one thing connects to another, and mm -hmm. and just he, he says, just pack your bags and just go for the ride. Let let, let her go. <laughs> And uh, and just Enjoy let her talk. You know, some yeah, yeah. guys might be thinking, "Well, I don't want to feed the monster and just let it go." You know, <laughs> the but, monster. Well, no. Okay, that's not a good analogy. Okay. So <laughs> wrong. Well, I said some guys might think that. Okay. So. Talking now, honey. Just Okay, but his encouragement was just let her go and and, and listen and and. Uh, and Listen, like that—that yeah. that is the key. Yeah. It could yeah. actually yeah. Be listening because well, it's so I heard, important. I heard somebody say that the biggest problem in communication in marriage is most of the time we don't listen to understand; we listen to reply. To see exactly yeah. Yeah. what are we going to say? It. We're not trying That's to understand exactly what he's it. trying yeah. to say. We're trying to oh. figure out, okay, That's how am exactly I going to talk about what he mm -hmm. just said? How am I, what's my comeback? Exactly. Yeah. What's my comeback? Exactly. Right? exactly. And, and many times, it, in sort of understanding that, if we then repeat what was said right uh, before us so that we can show that we understand yeah. what we have to say after that when we do that we gain a voice right so when we repeat what when I repeat what she said now she knows that I've heard her and so she's more apt to listen to what I have to say yeah. that's good that's good and the conversation ends with uh, maybe it's not you know that sigh that Pam had but but it's just kind of a Okay, I've got. Yeah. We got it on the table. We yeah. talked it out well, yeah. and and you both feel good about it at the right. end. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Yeah, well, I think we all feel good about this <laughs> right now. Yeah. We can sign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we'll, we'll have a little bit of a break, but we'll be back in the kitchen in a moment. We're going to be hearing from Dr. Mike on, on the, the beach, beach, and he's going to be talking about a certain battleground that we might not always associate mm. with marriage. All right, stay with us. Men don't waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Men don't waffle. That's good. That's good. Our goal is to find the best, to look for the best. And when you look for the best, you'll find the best. When you look for the worst, you'll find the worst. Hey friends, Ron and Ann here. We're so glad you're with us at A Better Us, and we pray your marriage is blessed as you take this in. Be sure and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and enjoy this video. One of the most destructive things that can happen in the life of your marriage happens in the battleground of your mind. So here's what happens. We all have thoughts, a running dialogue in our head about what happens minute by minute, moment by moment in our life. Over time in a marriage, as resentment builds up and contempt builds up and hurts build up, we start to think very negative thoughts about our spouse. Sounds something like this. Here's some of the things I hear in the clinical office. My spouse is just selfish. They're just selfish. Or 
my spouse is, is not a fan of me. They, my spouse just thinks I'm stupid. Sometimes it gets pretty extreme. He's just a jerk. She's just a jerk. And we say these things to ourselves in our mind over and over and over again. And those thoughts become incredibly destructive. I'm going to tell you why. Because thoughts lead to feelings. You don't just have thoughts. Your thoughts will generate very specific feelings and emotions. Negative thoughts will generate negative feelings. And then negative feelings create negative behaviors. So thoughts lead to feelings and feelings lead to behavior. As, a, as you go on in your marriage with these negative thoughts and those negative emotions, the behavioral aspect of how you're treating your spouse becomes very palpable. Your spouse begins to feel it. They sense it. And before you know it, you're in a, you're in a negative cycle. If you want to have a healthy, powerful marriage, make the decision to believe the best about your spouse and to watch the battleground of your mind. Okay, we're back in the kitchen with uh, Mike and Diane and Eric and Kara, and good to hear from Dr. Mike on the beach yeah. there. Yeah. And the bottom line is there's a big battleground yes. that's going on in our marriages, and it's re really up here. It's mm -hmm. in our mind. Mm -hmm. Those uh, negative internal thoughts that can lead to the negative feelings, lead to negative behavior, mm -hmm. and we really need to uh, kind of mm -hmm. nip it in the bud early on. Like like the way you yeah. called me a monster in the last segment, oh that could actually lead to I negative thoughts. I wasn't calling thoughts. you a monster. I was saying, some guys might, okay. But we should probably get Dr. Mike Now I'm getting defensive. I'm, I'm getting defensive. That's another program yeah. real quick. But no, but no my, my point is that something that was said last week can really start to fester, yeah. and then we can start thinking about it and then it can become so much bigger in our minds right. than it should be because it was so harmless what he mm -hmm. said but then I start to think about over it and and over it's and like a snowball going downhill right. you know that's we right. got to watch our minds in the way we think there's a, a the, that song that gospel song that said he saw the best in me mm -hmm. when everyone else around could only worst. see the worst yeah. He saw the best, right? And it was talking about God seeing the yeah. best in us. And, and, and so with that, if we could apply that same thing of, of seeing the best in people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and specifically our spouse, right? Mm -hmm. if, if we can learn to try to find the best in them, we mm -hmm. can always look for bad things, right? But, mm -hmm. but I think our, our job, right, our, our, our goal is to find the best, to look for the the best and when you look for the best you'll find the best when you look for the worst you'll find the worst that's mm. good yeah. and and to not only think those good things about them but actually verbalize them as well and yeah. say you know what i really appreciate this about you and and that that mm -hmm. helps to reinforce you know to yourself but also it makes a big difference in in yeah. her mind as well yeah. Yeah. yeah and we have to learn how to love through those things right mm. so if we can just remember to keep loving our spouse through, you know, because sometimes we do say things that we don't mean yeah. for them to be hurtful, right? Mm -hmm. But like you said, we sit on them and they fester and then yeah. it comes back up in the next argument or, and it comes up again, exactly. right? And, and exactly. it, it just kind of, so we have to learn how to love through this. But yeah. there are a few things that we need to learn how to say to our spouse. Mm -hmm. And um, for instance, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, babe, I was wrong. I was, I, I was. I'm I, sorry. Yeah, like, yes. I was wrong. Or I'm sorry, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we can't say I'm sorry because we have that pride thing going all the time. I am And the sorry other thing too. is forgive me. <laughs> you know, can you just forgive me. Yeah. I, you know, I was wrong. Forgive me. Yeah. But there, there are certain words that we need to learn how to communicate to one another yeah. to make things easier. Because then when we get in the habit of, of saying those words, then we can go into Absolutely. that battlefield Absolutely. in the mind and take away Absolutely. the power. Power that those words would have, those, right. the problems that would have. That's right, that's yes, it. Yes. Would you forgive me? Yes. <laughs> I find it so easy to do that too when I'm not taking care of myself. Yeah. So if I'm not getting enough sleep or if I'm not in my mm. devotional life or yeah. things oh. like that, I can find that sometimes if Eric says something, I might fester on it because maybe I didn't get enough sleep and just reminding myself, right. no, I need to take every thought captive yeah. that I need to sometimes just hold on a second, maybe mm -hmm. sleep on it, mm -hmm. or just say, 
Lord, like I know Eric's heart and I know he loves me. Help me to see what he sees. Help me to see what you see, Lord, so that I can act appropriate in this Mm -hmm. instead of just acting like emotional and like um, just that's good. Going mm-hmm. all out. And that's that. good. On, on the yeah. other side of the coin there, um, instead of maybe you're thinking, you're overthinking it, on my side, sometimes I actually kind of feel, I don't know if it's, if it's I feel guilty or something, but that, I, that I'm not thinking as hard as Kara is about these issues. Mm-hmm. And so, like, is that an issue on my part? Do I need to change that? And mm-hmm. so... I don't know, and then I start overthinking about underthinking, and so I, I <laughs> and then that's a problem. So, yeah, so then where do we go from there? But so. I mean, you guys, you guys have only been married three years, so yeah. you're still learning how to process these things, and that's really good. I mean, you're yeah. you're yeah. talking and thinking the right way, you're asking the right mm-hmm. questions, and that's right. the important thing. Yeah. 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 You know, Proverbs 23, 7 talks about as a man thinks in his heart, so, so is yes, he. Exactly. And so it, it's not so much you are what, what you eat, you know, yes. right. you are what you think. That's right. right. Because as, uh, as Mike was saying, you know, those thoughts lead to the feelings mm-hmm. and feelings lead to behaviors. Mm-hmm. And so, but it starts in the mind. Yeah. And so, so how can we, uh, you know, renew our mind? The Bible talks yeah, about renewing talks about our minds and, mm-hmm. and doing things, you know, you know thinking about the, the good things, the pure, the holy, mm-hmm. the lovely. And, yeah. That's Philippians chapter 4 yeah. in the Bible where yeah. Paul says, mm-hmm. this is what you need to do. You know, you need yeah. to think about the good things, yes. whatever is true and pure and, pure and, and mm-hmm. good. Yes. Yes. And especially think about those things in regards to your spouse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you want, this is, the, this is the most important relationship you have on the planet. Oh, Aside yes. from your relationship oh, yeah. with God, right. mm-hmm. there is no one higher, not even... Your kids. Sorry, hun. You're my yes. son. <laughs> but you're the most yes. important in my yeah, eyes. Exactly. So you've got to work out things, things out. Out. So, yeah. yes. but, but no, I think you guys knew that too, didn't you, growing up, that, that this relationship was the most important. And so you really do need to pour most of your energy into mm. thinking and, and how can you make this better? And the battleground of the mind is a really important place to start. And Eric, that's why I loved you talking about overthinking and underthinking, yeah. right? Because that really is the key. Right. As long as you are processing the challenge with mindset. Right. Is we have set minds. Mm -hmm. Right. And if we do explore that's that whole exploration process, thinking about it, trying to get better, that that that's what leads us to uh, better understanding, better relationship, better communication. So continue to think. Yes. So Mm -hmm. that that, because that what you're doing is wonderful. That is the right thing. And 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 by the way, um, you've you've made the right choice. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Comments just that I mean that 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 whole uh, just uh, so admirable. Uh, to to even be able to think and process like that, this I think a lot of people. Marriage, right? I think a lot of people will be encouraged yeah. by your words. Can I today. pick them or can I pick them? <laughs> <laughs> You're on it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is great. It's been a good discussion, and so uh, we're not finished with the program quite yet. So stay with us. All right. For marriage encouragement, follow A Better Us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And subscribe for your free weekly Marriage Moment email at abetterus.tv. You know, one of the questions we get time and time again is, how do you fight fair? After all, we all have conflict, so how do you do it in a way that is productive? And we know certain ingredients are essential to fighting fair. That is so true. And one of the keys of a fair fight is taking ownership in the midst of the chaos. Yeah, you ever had a pride fight? (laughs) Of course, they're all pride fights, right? And this is essential. You've got to own your piece of the pie. That's part of it. And that involves humility. It does. And and you really think sometimes, look, this is not on me. You caused this by what (laughs) you did. But honestly, we can always say, okay, but the way I reacted to you in this moment is adding to the chaos in our relationship and I can really own that and when you have that humility and take ownership instead of blaming 
it turns that thing into a fair fight. Yeah, I have a friend who has this little saying you'll never forget. He says, humble pie is a pastry that's never tasty. Yep. And isn't that the truth? So sometimes you have to swallow your pride and yeah. say, hey, I know I'm adding to the chaos here, and I really want to blame you for all of it, but I realize I'm bringing some of it to the table as well. Right. You do that, you're well on your way to fighting a good fight. Hi, we hope you're enjoying the show. You know, our vision at A Better Rest is to see every marriage become a loving union that creates a safe family haven, building a legacy of hope for future generations. Yeah. That's why we feel it's so important to invest in marriage relationships through producing a new episode of A Better Us every week. Absolutely. If you feel as we do that marriages are worth investing in, then please consider joining us as a member of A Better Us with a monthly donation of $25. You'll be making a big difference in lives and families. And we'll send you two of our special mugs, the mugs that you see our kitchen couples using each program. Absolutely. And be sure to send us your mug shot selfie yeah. and we'll post it on our Facebook page and on our website. Simply visit abetterus.tv and click donate to set up your automatic monthly giving. God bless you and thank you so much for making this program possible and helping us strengthen marriages. So we can all become a better us. We hope you've enjoyed today's program as we've unpacked some communication issues between husbands and wives, and we've done it with the help of Bill and Pam Farrell. You know, they have that whole waffles and spaghetti thing down, yeah. and it makes perfect sense, <laughs> yeah. really. But understanding our differences isn't enough. We need to do the work to put into practice what it takes to become a better us. Mm -hmm. And then we heard from Dr. Mike on the beach, and he shed light on the battleground of our mind. Yeah. It's a place that has the potential to be extremely destructive mm -hmm. in marriage. If we've developed a pattern of negative thinking about our spouse, mm -hmm. those thoughts lead to negative feelings, which lead to negative behavior, and that's a downhill spiral for sure. Absolutely. You know that verse in Proverbs, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Maybe you need to do some heart business with God. Perhaps you've been holding on to some pretty harmful thoughts, which has led you to some hurtful words, and maybe you're on the verge of taking some drastic actions. Hmm. Can we pray for you? You see a number on the screen, and that's our prayer line. Mm -hmm. It's free number. It's available 24 hours a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week. You don't even have to give your name. Just call so we can pray for you. We also have some great resources available through our website at abetterus.tv, including our free weekly marriage moment email to help strengthen your marriage. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for stopping by. And remember, with God's help, there is always hope to become a better us. Hey friends, we really hope you're enjoying the marriage conversations here with A Better mm -hmm. Us on our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of more helpful marriage videos designed to give you hope and tools to make your marriage better. And you can see just a few options we think you might like here mm -hmm. and here. Enjoy! Oh, and make sure you subscribe by clicking here so you don't miss out on all the great marriage help we have coming your way soon.